Hello friends, this video on loss of motion part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. Please make sure that you have already watched part 1 before going ahead with part 2. Now let us discuss a very important term that is inertia. What is inertia? It is very important that we know about inertia before we start with the Newton laws because inertia plays a very important role in the Newton's laws of motion. So inertia is the resistance of a body to change its state of motion. It is the resistance of a body to change its state of motion. Let us take example which will make the definition clearer. Resistance means opposing something. The term resistance normally means to oppose. Correct? So it means that the body opposes to change its state of motion. State of motion means what is the state, if I say what is the state of motion of a body. That means whether the body is at rest or the body is moving with uniform velocity or the body is moving with decreasing velocity. So they are all the states of motion of a body. So inertia means the body doesn't want to change its present state of motion. For example, we have a ball at rest. If a ball is present at rest, it will always tend to be at rest. It will not like to change its position, change its state of motion. The ball at rest would like to be at rest and it would not like to move. So that is inertia. So the body by its own will have a tendency to be in its present state of motion. Similarly, we have a ball in motion. That is the ball is moving. So this ball will keep moving. I mean the ball will want to keep moving. So something which is at rest will always want to be at rest. Something which is in motion will always want to be in motion. So that is basically inertia. So inertia is nothing but the property of any body. Property of any body to be in its own position, to be in its own state of motion. So I guess it is clear, it is the resistance of a body to change its state of motion. Now let us take a practical example of inertia which we see in our day to day life. Have you ever, ever observed that you experience a jerk when brakes are suddenly applied in your car? Suppose you are sitting in your car, it is moving at a considerably high speed. Suddenly brakes are applied. Have you observed that you get a jerk? Now why did you get that jerk? Let us see in this example C. This man got a jerk as soon as the brakes were applied. Now, why did he get that jerk? That is because, try to understand this very carefully. Initially, the car was in motion. So, the person sitting in the car, that is the man, was also in motion. That is, this is the initial scenario because the car was moving with some velocity. So the car is in motion and the man who is sitting inside is also in motion. Now when the brakes are applied suddenly, later when brakes were applied suddenly, the car came, when brakes were applied suddenly, car came to rest at once because you applied brakes. Now what is this applying brakes? It is basically applying an external force. So the car was in motion, I already discussed in the first slide, whenever a body is moving, we need an external force to stop the body. So in this case, the car was moving. So we gave an external force, that is we applied force and we stopped the car. So the car came to rest. But what about the man? The man was earlier in motion. Now, due to inertia, the man wants to be in motion even after the car came to rest. That means the car stopped, but the man still wants to move in the forward direction. That is why the car comes to rest immediately, but the man even then moves a little forward. And since the car already came to rest, so he comes back again. That is why you see it as a forward and followed by a backward movement. That is what you see as a jerk. So the man tends to be in motion due to inertia. So what did we see here? 
Initially, the car was moving, so the man was also moving. After some time, since an external force was applied on the car, the car came to rest at once. But the man, because of inertia, still wants to be in motion. That is why, even when the car stops, the man first moves a little forward. The car stopped, the man moved a little forward because he still wants to move ahead. And since the car stopped, so he had to come backward. So now this forward and backward movement combined together is seen as a jerk. So I hope it is clear now. So similarly, there are many instances in our day-to-day -day life when inertia plays a role. You must have observed that when you stand in a bus, let us suppose you didn't get, get a seat in the bus and you are standing. When the bus driver applies a brake suddenly, even then you get kind of moved. So even there, inertia plays a role. So basically, what we studied about inertia is, it is a tendency of a body to be in its own state of motion. Now that we have discussed what is inertia, let us discuss Galileo's law of inertia. Galileo's law states that a body moving on a frictionless surface should move with constant velocity. That means if we have a body on a frictionless surface, that means there is no frictional force. No frictional force means there is no force to oppose motion. Frictionless. Frictionless means there is no force to oppose motion. So if there is no force to oppose motion, in that case, the body should move with constant velocity. Let us suppose, let us take the examples of a body moving on a rough surface as well as on a smooth surface. Let us say we consider a rough surface first. In this case, we see that the velocity of the ball will keep changing depending on the type of surface it is moving on. Like somewhere it is up, somewhere it is down, somewhere it is smooth, again up, down, that way. So the velocity of the ball as it rolls over it will keep changing. But con contrary to this, if we take into consideration a smooth surface where there is no friction. However, such frictionless surfaces are not possible to exist in reality. But let us suppose we imagine an imaginary frictionless surface where there is no friction at all. In that case, what will happen to this ball? The ball will keep moving with uniform velocity. I mean, the ball will not come to rest on its own. In this case, normally on a surface, you would have seen that if a ball is rolling, it will come to rest after some time. Why does it come to rest? Because the force of friction tries to oppose its motion and it makes the body to come to rest after some time. But if there is no force of friction at all, there is no force to stop the body. So once the body started moving, there is nothing to stop the body until and unless some external force is applied. So if you don't apply any external force, the ball will keep moving with the same velocity forever. That means for on a frictionless surface, a body moves with constant velocity. So what was the conclusion from Galileo's law of inertia? Basically, Galileo's law of inertia corrected the law which was given by Aristotle because Aristotle said that for a body in uniform motion, there is a net force acting on it. But Galileo corrected Aristotle's law. How? Let us see that. So Aristotle's law was falsified by Galileo. How come? Because Aristotle's law said that for a body in uniform motion there is a net force acting on it but what did Galileo say Galileo said that the net force is required to keep a body in uniform motion only if frictional forces or the resistive forces are present. That means 
Aristotle said that irrespective of anything, whether frictional forces or the resistive forces are present or not, for to keep any body in uniform motion, external force is required. But Galileo said that net force is required to keep a body, net force is required to keep a body in uniform motion only if resistive forces are present. But if there are no resistive forces, that means the scenario of frictionless surface, if no resistive forces, in that case, no force is required. No force required in that case. The body will keep moving with uniform velocity. So what Galileo concluded was for, for a body moving with uniform velocity, if a body is moving with uniform velocity, the net force acting on the body is equal to zero. This is what Galileo observed. That is why he falsified Aristotle's law. Because he said that if a body is moving with uniform velocity, there is a net force always acting on it irrespective of anything. But Galileo said that yes, a net force is required to make a body in uniform motion only if the resistive forces are present. That is because we will see it clearly from this example. Let us suppose we have a box on the ground. Let us suppose there is no frictional force. If there is no frictional force and the body was made to move once, once you have given some force to make the body move, it will keep moving forever because there is no force to stop it because there is no resistive forces. So in this case, you don't need to give any external force. No external force is required. But now let us suppose that the same box is lying on the ground. There is a frictional force which is acting here. So what will happen in this case, if you give a small force on the body to make it move, it will move for some time and then come to rest. So if you want to make this body move in uniform motion, you will have to apply an external force capital F. Now when this capital F which you applied becomes equal to the frictional force F, that in that scenario the body is moving with uniform velocity. Or we say it as uniform motion. So what do we see? In uniform motion, the net force, the net force is equal to zero because two equal and opposite because when it is moving with in uniform motion, that time capital F and small f both are acting in opposite direction and both are equal in magnitude. That means equal and opposite forces are acting. So the net force is equal to zero. So there were two points which were corrected by Aristotle, sorry, which was corrected by Galileo in Aristotle's law. First thing, I'll write it point wise so that it becomes easier for you to remember. The first point which Galileo corrected was external force, external force is needed for uniform motion in a body only when the resistive forces are present. And the second point which he corrected was net force on a body moving with uniform velocity or net force on a body in uniform motion is equal to zero. So these were the two things which were incorrect in Aristotle's law and they were corrected by Galileo's law of inertia. That is net force on a body moving with uniform velocity is equal to zero and external force is required to keep a body in uniform motion only if resistive forces are present. Now this Galileo's law of inertia is the basis of Newton's first law of motion. We will see how. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.